Suicide is a permanent action to a temporary problem. This is an epidemic that is not just a responsibility of our government, but it's a greater responsibility to our parents and schools. Not talking about it isn't being proactive. As a matter of fact, it's not addressing the needs, the needs of our youth. Let's be honest, we are all a mess. And that is the common ground that we must come together and pick each other up. Teen suicide, why teens commit suicide. Hey, I'm Jeff Yaldin, youth mental health speaker, teen suicide prevention and crisis intervention expert on teen mental health. When a suicide happens, people want to know, why do teens commit suicide? One of the things that hurts today's teens is the ability to cope with life's challenges and problem solving the obstacles and situations they face. What can be perceived as everyday life situations and challenges to us can be insurmountable for a teenager today. My friends, we have an epidemic on our hands and we need to start talking. The trend is that in the next decade, we will have a 31% increase in teen suicides, drug addiction, and alcohol abuse. Here are the top reasons why teens make that forever decision. Mental illness. While everything I will address are driving factors of teen suicide, often the underlying issue is one of a mental illness. Most teens who attempt suicide do so because of depression, bipolar disorder, or borderline personality disorder. These disorders amplify the pain a teen may feel. And so teens attempt or commit suicide not because of a desire to die, but rather in an attempt to escape a bad situation or painful feelings. It's rare that one thing will lead to a suicide, but I'll tell you that a single event could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Being a teenager is one of the most difficult phases of life, where they're lonely, they feel alone, what do they do? They open up their phones, their computers, tablets, and they open up to the internet, whether it be social media platforms, they want to text a friend, call a friend, and they're hoping that someone understands them. And so the internet or social media, texting, phone calls, YouTube, their phones is where they go to find something. Maybe it's the passion that they lost, the happiness that they need. It's not that they think happiness is available on the internet, but what is there is a distraction from what they're feeling. And that distraction is very useful at this time that they're feeling lonely. My friends, it's a sad and lonely world that teens say that they're living in. Speaking of screen time, research suggests that hours at a time in front of phones on computer screens and tablets aids depression and thoughts of suicide. Depressive symptoms are more prominent in teens who spend a lot of time on their devices. What's a lot of time? More than four to five hours a day is alarming. Ideally, mental health professionals say one to two hours a day of screen time, that is considered the safe zone. So I know many of you say, we can't blame smartphones as the increase in mental health issues amongst teens. Let me tell you this. Smartphones and social media is by far the biggest change in teens' lives in the past five years. Coincidentally, the past five years, the number of teen suicides has been staggering, alarming. What's further alarming is small children are spending triple the amount of time on phones and tablets than they did even four or five years ago. Reasons why teens feel alone, ah, family problems, no real friends, not accepted, not satisfied with their life. Nobody understands them. They're not accepted for their choices, their music genre, their fashion style, personality, their sexual orientation, prejudices, rumors. They say it's difficult to stop them. Bullying and cyberbullying, being afraid to speak up. My friends, there's so many more reasons. The list is just way too long. I'm going to tell you this though, most teens that are interviewed after a suicide attempt say that what causes teen suicide are feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. Suicidal teens often feel like they're in situations that have no solutions. 
and other causes come from trying to escape feelings of pain, rejection, hurt, being unloved, victimization, or loss. Teens may feel like their feelings are unbearable and that those feelings will never end. So they think that the only way to escape is suicide, that forever decision. Being a burden and failed expectations, unrealistic academic, social, or family expectations can create a strong sense of rejection and can lead to deep disappointment. And so when things go wrong at school or at home, teens tend to overreact. Many teens feel that life is not fair, that things never go their way. They feel stressed out and confused. When teens feel down, there are ways that they can cope with these feelings to avoid serious depression. Everything I'm going to suggest help develop a sense of acceptance and belonging that's so important to teens. Try to make new friends. Healthy relationships with peers are central to teens' self-esteem and provide an important social outlet. Get involved. Participate in sports. Get a job. School activities and the abundance of them. Hobbies. Staying busy. All of this helps teens focus on positive activities rather than negative feelings or behaviors. So I want to encourage you, join organizations that offer programs for you. Get your kids involved. Special programs geared to the needs of teens help develop additional interests. Ask a trusted adult for help. When problems are too much to handle alone, teens should not be afraid to ask for help. But parents and adults need to be present for teens and not lecture or make them feel that their feelings aren't important. Validate them. There are many factors that contribute to depression. As a matter of fact, studies show that some depressed people have too much or too little of certain brain chemicals. Also, family history of depression may increase the risk of developing depression. And some other factors that contribute are difficult life events such as the death or divorce, moving from one school to another, side effects from some medications, and negative thought patterns. Situations often drive the emotional causes of suicide, such as bullying and cyberbullying, abuse, a detrimental home life. As I said earlier, the loss of a loved one or even a severe breakup with a boyfriend or girlfriend can be contributing causes of teen suicide. Often many of these situations occur together to cause suicidal feelings and behaviors. I also want to address today's media and the internet. It's amazing how much information our teens have access to on the internet, some of which can be traumatizing. And so in addition to cyberbullying, which is a major problem today, kids can now easily access information about how to hurt themselves or even to harm others. Today's media that our teens are exposed to is more and more sophisticated and more and more graphic. And so our teens get exposed to more and more things. Any form of bullying, my friends, whether that bullying is face-to-face -face or cyberbullying online, it's known to be connected to depression and suicidal behaviors. Well, I don't think teens want to die. I think that they don't know how to ask for help. Therefore, leaving them with the only other option, death by suicide. I received quite a few messages saying, Jeff, I'm not afraid to die, but give me a reason to live that is greater than my desire to not want to live. Let me leave you with this, my friends. Many parents and families today don't acknowledge that their kid is struggling. And in many families, mental health isn't an option. And so this makes it harder for our schools to get help and for teens to get the help that they need. And so school counselors don't have the teen on their radar because they don't know. And so how do you expect our schools to help when they're not aware and we're dealing with parents saying, well, you know, we'll take care of this at home or my child's 15 or 16. This is common at their age. I want to address the stigma. My friends, we're all responsible for challenging the stigma that surrounds mental health, whether it be teens or adult mental health. 
I'm going to tell you right now, it's, a, it's an economic issue. It needs our attention. So the bottom line is this. Teens need adult guidance more than ever to understand all the emotional and the physical changes that they're experiencing. And when teens' moods disrupt their ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis, that may indicate a serious emotional or mental disorder that needs attention. So take action immediately. Do something. Getting help is okay. This is an epidemic that is alarming and it's getting worse, my friends. If you're interested in me visiting your school community, please visit jeffyalden.com or my nonprofit foundation, jeffyaldenfoundation.com. My friends, thank you for watching this video. I hope you share it with other communities, families, and schools. Take care.